St. Francis of Assisi once said, where there is charity and wisdom, there is neither fear nor ignorance. Acts of human charity have been documented since the beginning of recorded history. Yet even now in the most democratic and economically advanced nations, charity is still necessary. Does this mean that charitable acts are failing to affect meaningful change? Should charity even be the responsibility of individual citizens? Or is it the obligation of government? Do handouts make people lazy and dependent instead of resourceful and responsible for their own livelihoods? Is it every man for himself or are we all in this together? To discuss these questions and more, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, a war and writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. <sighs> Fuck, gonk. Right. So, Red Nose Day, Comic Relief has come round again. Yeah, um, Red Nose Day is obviously the very specific date in the calendar for the whole generic term comic relief, I think. It's it? normally when the uh, telecast happens, yeah. um, people know that that's the day when they can uh, dress up, do charitable acts, but of course Comic Relief is a charity that's working all the time for uh, disenfranchised all over the world. And um, you can go to the website uh, all year round, which is comicrelief.com. I think there's also rednoseday.com, which is uh, if you particularly want to donate for this year's appeal. Are you? Have you always been a, a strong champion of comic relief, Carl? Not really. Um, Why was I expecting that answer? No, well, this is, but I mean, we're doing a bit of charity now. We're donating our time. It's not much. It's not costing anything. It's a but I do loads of stuff without going on about it. That's, mm. I don't. I don't think you should shout about the bitch you do for charity because then who are you doing it for? Oh, exactly. I mean, well, this is my thing, isn't it? That uh, uh, there's a lot of people that only do it if it's in the public eye. It's to do it really to be a busybody or to show off or to feel good about themselves. And I suppose that's good and bad. I mean, if it gets you involved, if it does some good. My gift to the world has been you, Carl, to be quite honest. I feel that you're the world I'm now. sure there's people in Africa going, we, we prefer blankets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing a, a Wills charity, isn't it? Is it? Sort of. I mean, if, no, you, if, you make half, if you make a donation to a charity within the will, I suppose that's quite charitable. But Do just mean, giving money to your relatives isn't, is it? Of course it is. Well, they it shouldn't is. Have it. They're they getting shouldn't. something for nothing, but it's... I, mean, I don't know. It's giving something away that you have no use for. <laughs> exactly. I yeah, mean, but, but forget that. It's someone is getting something yeah. when they've done nothing for it, really. Well, it is. It, I suppose it is charity, but charity is usually infused with some sort of altruism. It's it. It's usually to do with them um, giving a a piece of something that is kindly because you could do with it. I mean, not not strictly. I think you can give away something you don't need, but it, it's hardly donating a kidney is it or some of your wages it's like it's not charity on your part because you're literally not around anymore so it's no longer you giving it it's just some yeah, but money I could, that I could either was. give it them or not give it them once i'm dead and i've turned to mush i shouldn't be worrying about suzanne's mum getting a table <laughs> but, is that what, is but that you what know, you're leaving her well I've, I've called up my dad first why are you said, doing a will for the because show because of this travel thing right, i'm yeah. doing and it can get dangerous you know but after. why have you done a will up to now because you sort of, uh, I don't know, I felt sort of young and free. <laughs> Whereas now I'm- <laughs> Never, that's never two words I've associated with Carl. <laughs> no. He's always seemed like a man who's in his late fifties. Yeah, and exactly, I'm yeah. never, the idea that you're free. It's it's more... it, it, even if we're just talking about the head alone, it's, it's <laughs> the, it's the head of a late fifty-year-old. Free year of old. hair? Yeah, <laughs> totally free of fucking hair. I'm sort of getting on first name terms with my doctor. Oh, mm. really? Chatting more. Oh, what is it this time? How's your yeah. middle finger? You Not know. too bad, Carl. All, all that sort of thing. So it's just made me think. Have you had that done for the will, by the way, for insurance? I think and stuff? you need to do any for a will. I think you do. There's nothing the on the paper. Exam. No. No. Uh, listen, for insurance purposes, I think you need to have um, a, a testicular exam for testicular cancer. You're just leaving the high risk for t testicular cancer, actually, and you're you're entering the high risk for prostate. Cancer. And you can have both at the same time. You could have both the at, the same time. at the same time. If he's a very dexterous doctor. Um, I wouldn't want that. Why? Too much like... It's just too, too much playful. going on. It's like someone juggling you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like being examined by Squidly Diddly. And so you said you called up your dad. Called him up. I said, is there anything you want if I, <laughs> if I, if I die? Right. And presumably, you know, Suzanne, she's getting the, she's getting the lion's share. She is. But then the fellow who was on the end of the phone talking us through it all was going, oh, you should get married. 
I was going, oh, shut up. He's saying, well, it makes it things a lot easier when it comes to this. And it's like, well, that isn't a reason to get married, is it? <laughs> well. So she can have all my stuff. I said, I've wrote on the bit of paper that she mm. can have it. I'm not bothered. What, I'll what be dead. did you wrote? What did you wrote? You know, all that whatever's whatever we've got, she can have. Yeah. Right. Well, that's fine. That's as good as a yeah a marriage. Then, isn't but it? it's something about um, tax. If you're not married, you have to hand over more. Well, she will get yeah. I suppose if it's money, she will pay tax on it. Yeah. I think you get so much, and then it's like ridiculous tax rate. Yeah. But she's going, you, that's why we should get married, I'm going to be paying tax. I'm going, hang on a minute, she's already like thinking about money loss <laughs> instead of me b disappearing. Yeah. She's going, yeah, we should. And I'm saying, look, you'll be getting a load of money. I said, if I die on this programme anyway, mm. I'm insured, you'll yeah. be getting about a million pounds for that. Yeah. I said, so that's that's something you haven't got now. Yeah. You've got nowhere near that now. <laughs> I said, so even if you have to pay tax on that, yeah. I, I don't think it'd be right to get married just in case I get killed. Well, you are married, aren't you? With it? Well, then you may as well get the paperwork. No, because then everyone wants a party. Everyone's you don't going, have to have oh, a party. You can go you straight do, down honestly, the office. Honestly, people start going, oh, you should do this. I know it's not a proper wedding unless you do that. Have you your two sets of parents met? No. That would be good, would it? Well, I suppose it's the reason to, isn't it? At least if you're getting married, there's a reason for them to meet. At the moment, there's no reason for them to meet. No. They'd get on each other's nerves. My dad wouldn't get on with a man. <laughs> Why? Just wouldn't. She doesn't like me, so she won't like me dad. Because <laughs> he's just an exaggerated version. <laughs> so, I think uh, it doesn't need to happen. But you could just nip down the registry office, get it done, done and dusted, and you just phone up your folks and say, it's already happened, it's I too said late. that, I said, listen, if we had to do it, I said if, if it was like, we've got to do it for some reason, mm. I said, I'd do that. You, we can have it done by two, you can be back in work for three. <laughs> because at the end of the day, there's no other, there's no, you know, we've known each other for years. Yeah. We're not going to suddenly turn into some sort of Tom Hanks and Med Ryan film <laughs> just because we've got married. Yeah. It's going to be the same, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Except she'd want a joint bank account or something. That's mm. the only other thing mm. that would probably change, and I don't like the idea of that. <laughs> Why? Right. Just, I like to know what's going on. There's enough people sticking their hand in my account, charity-wise and all that, without an extra hand going in. <laughs> Who is, happens to be the love of your life. I'm not moaning about it, I'm just saying it works the way it is. You hear about people getting married and it doesn't last. Adds extra pressure. <laughs> what pressure is it going to add? Um, It's not going to add any pressure. I suppose that you yeah. resent the fact that the only reason you'd be getting married is because she gets your money after your death tax-free. What if you gave her a series of challenges so that she sort of I earned the it, right to have that it money? It just keeps her on her toes. <laughs> because whilst we're not married, it's easy to go, I'm sick of this. So mm. it keeps it, it keeps it keeps sort her of, on her toes. Yeah. But it keeps us both sort because of Because you're stuff. such a find, she's got to yeah. work hard to keep you, hasn't she? When you, you, what have you, what, you never do anything in order to sort of maintain this relationship, as far as I can tell. I'm not saying Loads. you're not, you're a bad mind, but in terms of I romantic was... Meg Ryan type stuff, wh right. wh you never do anything. Me and Jane were out with him and Suzanne the other night, right, at, at dinner, and honestly, he is so, so grumpy. He was saying about, uh, uh, for Christmas, right, he said, you've had a flaw. <laughs> you've had a flaw. <laughs> now, what did that mean? We had a new floor put in. But how is that her floor? Because she wanted it. But you walk on it too. I paid for it. I don't understand what but you mean. But don't you understand that, like, <laughs> a, 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 you know, a romantic break or a, or <laughs> clothes or perfumes, you know, sort of things that are kind of indulgent for a lady. That's that's a gift, not yeah. a new floor. That is like something that you give to some little African fella on comic relief. In fact, I think I saw it once. He didn't yeah. have a floor. <laughs> exactly. They built him a floor. I, I remember watching it with you, and they gave him a new pair of shoes and the floor. He went, hold on, floor or shoes, not both. <laughs> oh. when, when that tsunami hit, and uh, it was like a month after Christmas, they showed um, that Britain had given two billion pounds, right? And he was going, that's enough. He said, before, they were living in Mudut. Now there's an Arndale centre. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you think charity is all right as long as the people don't get above their station with charity? I think it should be there as a little little booster. Something's happened that they didn't expect. They're all a bit in shock. I don't think they'll, they'll, they'll feel bad because all they ever seem to do, these countries that are struggling, they never give anything back. Right. They've always got their hand out. Right. And it's been like that since I was a kid. Yeah. I remember being a kid 
people mm. knocking on the door, my mum going, don't look at the door, there's someone there. <laughs> 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 and we just pretend they were Charity there. starts at home, not at your home. <laughs> no, but because it's all the time. I mean, my mum didn't like answering the door anyway, even if it was the pools man, she'd sort of say, don't move, and he might not see that we're here. So you just froze where a man was at the door. Well, you just, because the front room was near the door, so people right. could see in. Right. So you just sort of stayed there and pretend that either you well, can't so like hear some sort of predator, like, they can't see if you don't move. Well, even if he was peering in through the window and he could see you in there not moving. So he looked through well, and there was three people just frozen, <laughs> right, right, like statues, right, just their eyes looking at him. Yeah. And well, him confused. Well, not they're clearly dead, I'll move on. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's obviously the been a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> and did you did you say sitting or stand up or no. did you sort of like throw yourself? No, to we, the just, floor? we just sat. We just sat on on the you know where you were and you just stayed still. But did he ever look in and see? I you don't know because you didn't turn around, did you? <laughs> so you would pretend you couldn't hear the door. It's easy. It's honestly, the amount of times people would come round, it's either. Right. It seemed to be the eighties had a lot of it because it was yeah. all the Avon thing, wasn't it? It was perfume, yeah. Yeah. Tupperware. What? Tupperware. Tupperware. Yeah, the plastic <laughs> boxes. Tupperware. <laughs> 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 it's, it's dishes for fat people. Uh, here we go. Oh, these are big. God, they are. They're for fat fuckers like you to eat out of. There was the pills, man. Right. Just a lot of charity stuff. Just a lot, it seemed to be the time, the 80s, that they suddenly found out they can sort of scav money off people. Yeah, and oh, there's a lot of scaving. So, that, uh, that's why we used to ignore the door. <laughs> I just love this image of you. Yeah, <laughs> you're so in silent. the lounge, yeah. you're having a little boogie, it's Christmas, someone's yeah. tapping on the glass. <laughs> Freeze! Freeze. <laughs> they just go, well, we'll move on. Yeah, Nothing yeah, here for yeah. us. Hammer time. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> there's a, uh, let, let, okay, right, let's do the scenario. I'm, I'm at the door. Uh, I can I can see you're in there. You might as well come open the door. Carl? Carl? Why are you staying so still? Are you, are you trying to avoid me? <laughs> it's working. Carl? Your eyes are moving. <laughs> can you come to the door, please? <laughs> I suppose in the end you've got to move Carl, on. Carl? Um, no, I'm going to stay here. I'm just going to stay here until you have to move. <laughs> Carl! <laughs> this is the most pointless podcast we've ever done. Me shouting your name and you pretending not to be here. Okay, and I'll move on then, right. It exactly. works. Yeah, works okay. perfectly. Because Brilliant. once they've got you, that's the whole thing with charity. Once they've stopped you in the street, if you've stopped, that's it. Keeps on going. You're handing, you're handing something over. Yeah. I mean, the amount of times I've been stopped. I mean, the good thing now is you've got an iPod, so you can just either pretend you're on the phone mm. or listen to music. Or just stay very still. <laughs> just freeze when someone says, can I trouble you for... Oh, he's <laughs> totally frozen. That would be amazing, because they're normally in one spot, aren't they? Yeah. So it's just so they're carrying on they selling stop you, and so you've got to stay there for the rest of it outside waitress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for seven yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah, it goes dark. <laughs> well, I'm. I've finished my shift. I'm off. And then you just see you, your eyes. Just see them walk away like that, and they all meet in their little tunics. And then you start walk. They look back, and you freeze. And then they walk on, and then you can go home seven hours late. If you would like to donate to Comic Relief, why not visit RedNoseDay.com. Ever since I was young, I've always liked going in charity shops, particularly because, you know, you can you find sort of interesting old records in there. Never sort of gone in there to buy clothes and stuff, but, you know, books, whatever. And, uh, I was in a charity shop, you know, and I've patronised patronized them for years, and I noticed out through the window, there was like a paparazzi guy, and he was taking pictures of me through the window. That was a bit weird, and obviously the old ladies in there didn't have any idea who I was, so they just thought that was a bit strange. And then it was in one of the, uh, the magazines, like the kind of celebrity magazines. Was, oh, here's Steve Merchant. You know, he, despite all the money he must have made from his various projects, he's still going in charity shops. And you just think, but so I, how is that a bad thing? I, I'm yeah, sure I'm I giving know. my money to a charity. Isn't that a noble cause? I mean, obviously that's not the reason I'm doing it. I'm doing it to save 50p. To save 50p, of course, but- But they don't know they that. They don't know that. No. They you won't be going there and going, keep the change, love. You never have said never that. Never said that. Never said that in your life. No, occasionally off shoplift. 
<laughs> Hi, no mug. 70p? Don't you think that seems frustrating, though, that... Yeah, but what do you expect? They're, what are they going to do? They're not going to say Steve Merchant, Heart of Gold, are they? I just thought all these things would slowly accumulate towards the OBE. Yeah, I know. I know. I think you've got to do a bit more than um, yeah. get uh, Roger Whitaker's greatest hits <laughs> for 10p. My mum's always in them. And uh, because my mum goes in them, my dad sort of got into going into them now because, you know, the weather's not good or whatever and he thinks rather than standing outside he he went in one and he was after a jacket just like a sort of a you know casual but quite smart yep he's quite a big bloke so it's difficult to find him right so he's in there sees the jacket goes oh look here's, here's that sort of jacket that i'm after picks it up tries it on right fits it's good this isn't it she's going yeah yeah while she's looking at you know a toad that you put money in or whatever yeah mm. so he gets to the counter and it's got a price tag on it eight quid right so he said i'll give you give you six quid he had six quid in his pocket yeah yeah give you six quid for that she went no it's it's eight pounds now that's wrong isn't it that's a that's a good price and it's six quid they've got it for nothing yeah and she she wouldn't have any of it he said, "Surely, surely, something's better than nothing. If you don't give me this for six quid, it's going back on the, back on the anger." And they, they said, "No, sorry." Yeah, but they might later sell it for eight pounds. But they might not, and it's been given to them for free. Yeah, so what not... does it matter? But the the old who's come not... up with the price of eight quid? Who is this? Yeah, they but don't she's know not haggle. She's not there to haggle. She, someone's priced up, and she's just a volunteer. Who's, who's maybe she thought? Maybe she thought of it that she was losing the charity two pounds as opposed to gaining it six but they haven't, haven't gained anything because he put it back on and how many people want it how many people are looking out for that jacket it might be the principal she might have thought oh you can't haggle when it's for charity it was a fair price someone i give a lot of stuff to charity a lot most of the time just because it's it's nearer than the wheelie bin is it's just <laughs> a way of getting rid of garbage most sure. of the time with me stick it all in a bin bag good stuff on the top the stuff that you're embarrassed about yeah. stick it in the bottom of the bag what are you embarrassed in, about just old shoes trainers some of the books you've written uh socks, socks underpants underpants you do not give underpants to charity washed but who's gonna <laughs> wash i know as opposed to just like peeling them off <laughs> yeah well, you didn't, to, i don't know why you've got a problem with underpants but shoes you see i've never buy underpants from a charity yeah. shop though. i mean i don't care how low you are on the socio-economic level I know. you can get about 14 pairs for a quid in some places i know i don't know who's buying underpants i don't know who's <laughs> buying your underpants i definitely don't know I mean, if they were signed yeah that, that is something that is something i like doing though when i've given to charity mm. i like going past the shop and seeing if it made it in the window mm any success yeah re recently the one not far from here had me um egg cups in the window <laughs> so it's like oh look there's, there's what you've one. got a new set of egg cups so you've got rid of your old ones yeah um, i don't think we've got any egg cups haven't you no why I don't not think so i don't you don't have boiled eggs uh i can't imagine you it, it would take you'd be too impatient to boil an egg rick well I, I, yeah i just don't, it's, it's those things you think of never buying you know like you know egg cups a whisk no, but you do eventually. I suppose you got to, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's things that were just always there when you grow up, isn't it? That you yeah. have to go and you think, you know, think of, but not second hand though. But there's nothing wrong. Honestly, it's hardly, be, I mean, it's made the window space. That's how good it was. It had hardly been used, that egg cup. Because mm. it was a doubler. And I think they were quite small for the egg size that I get. I think they were made more for the small egg. And I have the large egg. Right. So it was, it was never really just used. Just like your underpants. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, are you ever been a charity shopper, Rick? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, what I used to do a lot of was um, was records and and uh, tapes and things like that. But it ended up sort of being ironic. It really ended up like getting you know something like uh, Shane Rich's greatest hits, yeah, and things like that. A bit of a dilemma that um, my aunt in had. She likes charity shops as well. Mm. Uh, she's got a neighbour went out to Graceland's big Elvis fan they came back she said how was how was Graceland's they said oh it was brilliant best holiday we've ever had probably go back again back again we've got a gift for you right they get out this clock like a like a little sort of it's like a Swiss you know the Swiss sort of um, looks cuckoo like a little clock. house like yeah. a cuckoo clock mm. but on the hour little Elvis comes out the top and goes uh huh <laughs> so she went oh cheers she's not really into elvis she's more into jim reeves and yeah, uh, yeah. glenn campbell and stuff yeah. 
but what can you say? She said, oh, thanks, mm. thanks mm. for that. She put it in, took it in the house. Maybe they could uh, get attachments. Maybe you get a little uh, Jim Reeves to pop on the spring. <laughs> Change it anything you yeah. like. Like uh, So Solid Crew, you can get a little So Solid Crew. And, it, it, and it, that pops out, or whatever. You so know. anyway, it's in the house. She's thinking, I'm not going to put that up. It's not her sort of thing. So uh thinks, give it to charity. Of course. She goes down to the charity shop, gives them that, thinks nothing of it, goes off to the pub for an afternoon drink. Mm. <laughs> anyway, next day she's going out for an afternoon drink again. Passes the charity shop. It's in the wind. Ooh. Ooh. And the chances are her friends are going to pass by. That was a dilemma. Of course. She had to buy it back. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. At a hugely inflated price. <laughs> For those that are American listeners, Comet Relief here is a sort of, um, it, it happens every other the year and you know people often do things um, in their workplace or at school, they can dress up, they can raise money in different fun ways and we were told in a school assembly, it was Comet Relief next Friday, right. everyone has to come along dressed up in fancy dress to school on that day. Has to? Yeah, they said they have to, have to dress up. They said um, you pay 50p towards Comet Relief and you have to pay a pound if you don't dress up. Right? That's annoying, isn't it? So, I, of course, I'm looking forward to this because, you know, I'm a sort of aspiring comedian and that. Get to dress up like a clown, right? Spent wow. quite a lot of time getting the old clown outfit together. What did that look like? The what? shoes, obviously, I just wore my regular <laughs> shoes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I had the red nose, a wig. Wow. You know, the whole deal. Bow, big bow tie that my mum made for me. Like, you know, I thought this is going to be the best day ever, right? Get to school. I want you to picture this scene, right? During the assembly in my class of 30. School uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform. Lanky kid dressed as a clown. School uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school. There was three people in the entire school who dressed up. But Steve, you're fifty p. Yes, but then worse than that, it turns out I was furious because I looked like an utter dick. Obviously, um, it turns out that what happened. I don't know whether I missed this information, but apparently the headmaster must have had another assembly where he told people that he wasn't allowed to enforce that rule right. about making people pay well, that's good. against their will. Yeah. So obviously no one showed up dressed what, like an utter dick except what, me and what, about two other knobs. What disappoints me is that for a man who was um, a self-confessed uh, uh, aspiring comedian, you chose the least funny thing in the world to dress as. Yeah. It, clowns are anti-comedy. They suck comedy out of the room. It's not- You're right. And this is from a man who wanted to dress as Hitler at the Golden Globes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. He knows funny costumes when he thinks. <laughs> but you were saying about the guys who bother you in the street. Did I tell you that when I pretended to be foreign to try and get out of that? Did I tell you that story? Amazing. Because I used to, a technique I used to develop at university was whenever people bothered me in the street, I would pretend to be sort of generic foreign. I can't really do a foreign accent, but I would just be like, like if someone asked for directions, I was always worried about giving them the wrong directions, so I would just, sorry, I don't, I don't really, uh, how you say, you know, it's just yeah. kind of vague foreign. Brilliant. And I've periodically used this method throughout my life, and not so long ago a guy stopped me with one of those charity tunics. And I sprang into me old trick. I was like, sorry, I don't, um, uh, a, um, a, 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 an elderly Russian woman. <laughs> I don't know what voice that is. I don't yeah. know what accent it went, it went from vaguely French yeah. to sort of Eastern European beggar. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was. And the guy, I was like, I don't, uh, he was, well, just, let me explain to you about it. I, sorry, I'm not from, um, and the guy, This world. Yeah. I am from <laughs> Planet <laughs> Snark. And the guy said, uh, are you Stephen Merchant? No. Swear Sorry, God. not when you were famous. Oh yeah, no, you didn't. Yeah, because I hadn't. It hadn't occurred to me. I just. It was like a lapse no! of concentration. God, it oh, was a I lapse see. of concentration because. Um, and did your bow tie spin round? <laughs> and you squirted in water and ran away. <laughs> That's what I did. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> because I, you know it's one of those things where you know you don't always remember that you've been on the. T it's not like I That's instantly remembered that. Amazing. So, but look, so he says, "Are you Stephen Merchant?" And I, and then you're at this position where you've got to go. Either you've got to admit what you did. Or you've got to carry on the lie, <laughs> and I chose the second one. <laughs> so I was kind of like, I don't, I don't know who that is. What? I don't know what you. And he was like, Oh God, really? You look a lot like him. I was like, I've never heard. I don't. <laughs> In fact, you are Stephen Merchant. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm always getting stopped for for 
I mean, there's so many charities now. Anything. I think that's the other problem, actually, that there's so many now. Years ago, a problem wouldn't have been a problem, whereas today mm. it's someone's got this problem, someone's got OCD and we're collecting for that. Right. It's not just starving people anymore, it's everything. Yeah. One little fault, they're out there with a clipboard. Yeah, a lot, of new, bank a lot of new diseases have Definitely. cropped up. Particularly for these sort of rich and famous diseases that, that, that really uh, third around. world people do not suffer from. So I was in um, WH Smith's buying, probably buying a Valentine's card. Oh, um, okay. So there you go, you see, so I do yeah. do a bit. And um, is this the cheapest one you've got, love? <laughs> and I bought, yeah. this, I bought a big bar of like um, Galaxy. Oh, cheaper okay. than a cheaper than a box of chocolates, but yeah, still nice for me. That because they had an offer oh. on, right? Oh, <laughs> this is, this is what I'm saying. Okay, she's getting a card, isn't this she? This is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I felt awkward because she could see that. Oh, he must have some money. What a big bar of because Galaxy you could afford it? some chocolate. Well, mm. it's, it was like an impulse buy thing. Yeah, right. So she's thinking <laughs> mm. he's got money to burn. Yeah. So yeah. at first I didn't yeah. know who she There's was. A guy over here buying a big bar of galaxy and a, and a, and a small card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, follow him. So she's dun, there. Dun, dun, I'm dun, thinking dun, she dun, just works in WH Smith. Yeah. Morning, sir. All right, how's it going? Right. Oh, have you got a minute? Mm. So I'm thinking, oh, is it WH Smith saying, you know, how often do you buy the galaxy? Because they always yeah. do sort of surveys yeah. and stuff. So That's she tough. said, oh, you like chocolate? I went, yeah. She said, yeah, I'll have a chocolate. All right. Oh. Little chocolate. Yeah. I ate it. Yeah, then she goes, you. right, uh, are you aware of the problems in the world? So I'm thinking, oh, what's this? You see, they've been clever there. Yes. I can't say no and walk off without a bit of chocolate. Sure. Right. So Why don't you freeze? Um, Just freeze. <laughs> <laughs> We're closing up now. We're closing the shop. <laughs> so I said, oh, yeah, there's loads of problems. I'm sick of it. So she says... Um, no, not yours, sir. There so, are some people who are starving. Yeah, and I explained to her, I said, listen, I said, I've got loads of these charities every right. month. I right. said, my bank account is literally, because I, I don't use my current bank account that much. So right. you look at it with a statement, it's like, tools for Africa. Right. Help the aged. Mm. Deaf kids. Yeah. Um, there's another one. Dot com, deaf kids dot com. There's, 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 there's loads. It's tools for Africa when they send people like Carl over to help out. <laughs> Yeah, that is comic relief. <laughs> Tools for Africa is another name for comic relief if you watch it. So, um, so anyway, I said I do all this. She's going, oh, that's very good of you, but you know, w w we we need your money as well. So she's saying, just just as much as you can afford, you know, every little helps and everything. I've been here all day. Look, as you can see, I haven't had much luck. It's not that busy in the shop. Blah blah. Oh, all right then, right? So I give her the details. She looks at the amount, she goes, right, now the options are, we've got, you can tick the £5 box, the £10 box, the £20 box, the £50 box. This is a monthly payment. Right. She said, well, I'll put you down for a tenner. Forget the fiver, she just leapfrogged straight that straight in. away. <laughs> yeah. And you can't go back, can you? Because you, then you feel bad. Sure. To sort of go, well, you've got a £5 one there, tick, tick, that one. Yeah. She can see I've got the chocolate, sort of wasting your money on things that aren't necessary yeah. when there's people dying around the world. Yeah. yeah. I said, right, yeah, tenner, fine. And, you know, I filled it all out. I left the shop. Yep. Spent more on that than I did on the card and the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you spent under ten pounds then, basically. So <laughs> I get I get get home and everything. Forget about it. I keep seeing these statements going out. It looks like Gandhi's bank account. The, the amount of stuff I'm giving away for charities. Sure. I forget about it though. Forget it. It's I'm doing my bit for charity. I should yeah. feel good about it. Yeah. Anyway, something kicks off in the world. Right. Ring, ring, ring. ring. Oh. Hello. Is that Mr. Bilkinson? Straight away, I'm thinking, oh, who's this? This isn't good. Yeah. Oh, hello. It's so and so charity. Right. Are you aware of the problems in the world? I said, yes, I am. There's lots of them. Yeah, but have you heard about the latest one? I said, yeah. She went, well, I'm just calling up to say thanks for the donation that you give us every month, but it's not enough. So I said, yeah, well, I think I give enough. I said, you're not the only ones here. I yeah. said, I've got, I've got five charities on the go here. Yeah. I said, and, you know, I've give you what I can afford. Yeah. She's going, yeah, but let me just tell you about the problems. There's so many people missing here. This is bad. These are dying. Da, da, da. I'm going, I know, I know. I've, I was told all this when I signed up mm. and I agreed to that amount. Yeah. The £10 that I said I'm happy to give you, that's what I can afford. Call some other people up who aren't giving you a tenner. Yeah. She goes, no, but we haven't got their numbers, you know, and we understand that you're a supporter of our charity and, you know, just a little bit more will help. I said, listen, I can't. I've give you that amount. If you want, if it's not enough, let's stop the direct debit now. Right. I said, if it's not helping you, let's can it, <laughs> yeah. and I'll give it to deafkids.com. <laughs> I said, because they're not calling up, mithering. No. Well, they can. That's a good thing with them. So, 
<laughs> she said, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. I said, well, that's it then. She, and, and she wouldn't let it go. And um, in the end, she got an extra £1.50 off me. Right. But that shouldn't be allowed. I think they should have, like, one year where they go this year, uh, you know, hungry people. Right. Next year, people with a limp. Or... <laughs> Just like they do in, w with the China thing, with the year of the cat, year of the rabbit, it's very clear. Yeah. It's that year. That's who we're helping this year. Right. If you've got that problem, it's your year, you're going to have a good one. And who decides? Right. Uh, just have some meeting. Just have a meeting a with- But who gets together in the meeting? Uh, the, what would be the, the first charity. year? So what would be the first year, this year? Right, well, we'd we'd look at it and we'd go, right, what, what are we hearing a lot of problems about? And someone goes, so-and-so's hungry. Go, right, are we all in? Are we in to give this lot food? And we're not just going to give so them food. So it's not everyone who's hungry, it's specific people. So it's like hungry... Starving. People who are starving. If someone goes, oh, me, I, I, I've got, uh, I, I don't know, uh, what's another problem? Adenoids. Me, me kid's deaf. Well, maybe next year. Maybe next year. It's not your turn this time. We can't help everyone at once. Because right. that's life, isn't it? You've got to give and take in your own life. These things right. that I want, I can't have. I do without have something else. But that's there's more so important. many causes that right. but it that's could what I'm wait saying, 20 years before okay. your charity I comes I know, through. but what can you do then? Because we're not sorting it all out anyway. I'm paraplegic. Right. Oh, I need out really bad. I'm paraplegic. But so does everyone else. Well, why are you giving it to the hungry now? Because if we don't oh. help the hungry now, right, they they can't wait. You can wait. Right. Oh, oh God, I'm blind. Is this a different person? Though? Yeah, I'm blind. Right. Well, you're not hungry though, are you? Well, a bit peckish. Yeah, well... Where's the fridge? I can't find the fridge. Can you help me to the fridge? Yeah. Otherwise I'll be hungry as well. I'm blind and hungry. I'm blind and hungry because I don't know where the fridge is. Who's like you in? <laughs> 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 but Carl, this, this is just... It's just a chaotic order. idea. It's, it's a chaotic not... because people who are hungry, there's there's always going to be people who are hungry. Yeah, but, but then... You're not going to just... Because there's always going to be new people. Yeah. yeah. But but I sort the problem out. They've eaten all the food. It doesn't last forever, the but, food, but Carl. But I sort it out properly. How do you sort it out? Because I'll go, right, not only are we just giving you food, right. we're giving you some seeds. We're giving you a pan. What, we're you think you... they haven't Let thought of that? Let me hear the theory, please. Right. Sort it out. Don't just give food. That's going to run out. Right. Give them a proper... You see, the problem is, these companies who jump on the back of all... Do you know when I was in okay. the jungle? Right, when I was yeah. in the jungle, yeah. right? On that travel thing. Yeah. I was in that tribe, right? Now, some company had given that tribe a laptop mm. because it makes them look good. They can send out a press release. Mm. Well done to so-and-so computers. Right. They supplied the tribe in, you know, out of Amazon with a computer. I saw it, they were using it as a breadboard. <laughs> <laughs> because they don't know what it is. They've got no electric, it's useless to them. Right. And that's what charity does. Right. Companies use it to make them look good. When I was there and I really needed to go to the toilet, I was thinking, ah, oh, tribe, I wonder what their toilet facilities are like, right? Mm. Thinking they might, it might be better than just doing it in a hole. Surely they've built a toilet. They're not stupid people. They kill animals. They know what they're doing. They know mm. how to cook. Surely they've built some sort of unit. Turns out, they don't, they still do it in a hole. <laughs> but some company <laughs> had been there, some plumbing firm, and given them a toilet, mm. right? The bloke who, you know, the producer who was out there, he said, oh, you'll be happy. There's a toilet round the back there. I'm thinking, oh, brilliant. I go round there, it is a toilet, but it's not plumbed in. Sure. So it's just a vase with shit in it. <laughs> It doesn't work, and this is what we need to do. We need to get out there and say, this is how it works. Educate right. them. Okay, so let's do this then. So it's just with the seeds. You're not giving them a... Um, so I'm a starving African. Hello, Carl. C have you got any food? Got any... Got any food? Got any sandwiches? I'm well, starving. I have, but right. if I give you my sandwich, right. yeah. there's someone else behind you, right, and they'll okay. all come out. So what are you going to do then? What are you going to do? I'm going to help you. How? What are you going to do? I'm going to... I'm going to make you think about how to make food. Oh, okay, right. Uh, have you ever then? grown anything before? No, no. Right, well, no. here's some seeds for oh, potatoes. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, Carl. See you later. Do I just put them in the ground, yeah? Put them in the ground and oh. water them. Oh, there's no water, you dopey cunt. There is some No, water. there's no water, you dopey cunt. That's why we're starving, you dopey cunt. Right, well, at that point, that's where I go, well, this is a lost cause, eh? Right. Because there's no point. Can I have your so sandwich then, after all? No, you're what? not having it. You're right. not having it now. So, not only can I have a sandwich, you give me seeds with no water, you useless, bald-headed fucking twonk. Right, but all I've done there is made the mistake of the computer firm who's given a laptop to a tribe. Right. It's useless. Right. 
but there's got to be another way around this. Go on then. Either move, right? Because every year they're going to be queuing up saying, "I'm hungry, give me a sandwich." <laughs> no, you're not having another sandwich. Once again, it's an <laughs> utterly ill-informed discussion. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's no <gasps> point queuing up oh. every year. Do you oh. want a sandwich? Here's oh. a sandwich. But Carl, the next year, can I have a sandwich? Where's your brother? He died. <laughs> It's not oh, sorting anything, it's buying him an extra day, an extra month or something, but it's Carl, pointless. the point is, like Ricky's just flagged up, is that some of these countries, <laughs> the, <laughs> the he conditions- He died! The conditions are not there to just be able to plant potato seeds. So what are they meant to do then? Do you think we should go out every, every month, every year with sandwiches? Is that your answer, like some sort of buffet, an all-you-can-eat thing, once a year? <laughs> oh, oh god! Oh. You see, it is bad. I, you know, I don't oh. want to come across harsh. We, mm. th they've got nothing. We oh. waste stuff here. Waste annoys me just as much. Right. When I see sandwich shops chucking stuff out yeah. and bin bags binning it, yeah. when there's people out there who are hungry, it's mm. ridiculous. Yeah. But I don't, I don't understand. Right. It's a problem that isn't being so solved. So your, so your conclusion for these people, because there's no water where they are, right, is move. That, that is your honest. They should well, move. Well, well, what's your solution? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs. I don't, I don't even uh, pretend to know. Um, but... But I tell you, it's not just, just, it's sticking a, what's that saying? I don't know, it's sort of sticking a plaster over a hole or something and the yeah. plaster comes off, it's a problem again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, just, that's it's, the same, yeah. It's the same. I think that was Mark Twain. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds more like candy. <laughs> If you would like to donate to Comic Relief, why not visit rednoseday.com? Oh, I've got to tell you something, Steve, that cropped up when we were at dinner the other night. Carl said th uh, the most exciting words. He said, I've had another film idea. Wow. Does it star Clive Warren? No, it doesn't. He's gone bigger than that. Well, Carl, turn the film idea. Yeah, but you, you slagged it off on that No, you? I was just trying to, we are all chipping in saying, well, that, you know, they're, they're all trying to help. No, bro. Suzanne, you see, you had a go and then Suzanne thought, oh, I'm going to have a go here as well. <laughs> if I'd have told her that at home, she'd just go, eh, that'd be that. But suddenly, <laughs> Jane was chipping in. Everybody was having a go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see anyone else coming up with anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't realise it was a script editing meeting. <laughs> yeah, they just they thought just, it was a dinner. They just saying, oh, that, you know, they No, I'll tell you why it cropped up. I saw right. it. It was another thing in the, that free paper. Yep. It was something about, you know, the way we're advancing fast. Right. Mm. Which reminded me of the, you know, my film, The Love of Two Brains and stuff. Mm. How's that, is that being made yet? Has, have you had any... And it, it was just saying, you know, about um, how bodies can get reused. In a way, recycling sure. is the ultimate What recycling. did it say about that though? Because that, you, didn't, you didn't go into that. What, what it, was, was it? it was hinting at mm. bodies being reused. When you say hinting, you well, saw a bit of a headline didn't read on? No. What, and made the most up in your head? No, it was it oh. was scientists saying in the future, it's that right. old thing, in the future this is what we'll be able to do. Do you mean like Frankenstein being reused? Mm. old body parts fusing together. Yeah, but together that was or... all different. It was like a short arm and a long leg and that. This is a full body. Right. So pitch the film idea to me. Yeah. Sell it to me like you, I'm a Hollywood executive. Sell me the film. Right. Well, I'd probably tell you about the science facts there that okay. I've read. That. Okay. Let's start, let's start from scratch then. Um, oh, thank you so much, Carl, for coming in. We, uh, we heard there was a rumour that you're, you're dealing with another a British film company about a thing with a man with two brains with... Um, a guy called Clive Warren we haven't heard of, uh, but Rebecca De Mormo, we're very excited about because she she wouldn't be a a, 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 a lot to, uh, to 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 get so that, so the um, we, this film wouldn't cost much. Um, right. So, like I say, I've read they're going to be sort of the ultimate in recycling. Mm. If anything happens to the brain, they can reuse the body. Okay. You've got to remember that. Fantastic. By the time this film is made, that's probably going to be bigger news. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, so it'd be great if it can coincide. Okay, no, no, we love the fact we love this sort of research. We love this level of research. It's exciting. So what I was thinking is, um, I'm picturing probably it doesn't matter. It's not as fixed. It doesn't have to be this person. But I'm thinking Tom Cruise. <sighs> okay, Cruisey. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and the way it works is. Do you know Tom, by the way, or have you got an in there, or? No. 
No, okay, okay, but you just no, you, I, I think it's the sort of film that would appeal that he'd, to Tom. He'd sort of be into. I think it would okay. excite him. Okay, great. Okay. Great. Um, so the, the order coffees. Did, did um, what? Did Cheryl get you a coffee? Yeah. Oh, okay, thanks, great. So Are you hungry at all? Do you want to? No. 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 Great. So uh, Cheryl, I might have a tea actually. Cheryl, if you could. Will we wait for the teas before she comes in? She'll, she'll just sneak in. She'll be, she will be very quiet. She'll be like a doormat. She won't even notice she's coming. Okay. You just, okay. you've got your coffee. Okay. I don't want your tea. That's you don't want anything. No, no, I'm fine. Okay. Thanks. Go. Uh, actually, uh, I will have a tea, actually. Shall <laughs> Two teas, Shell. Thanks. Okay, go. Right. Thanks, Shell. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Is there sugar? Sorry, is there sugar in this, Shell? Oh, yeah. okay, shut the door behind you. Thank you. Okay. Go. All the way. Go. Tom Cruise. So I got Tom Cruise. That's what I've pictured so far. He, he's just on Mission Impossible 7. Right. Uh, in this film. Oh, in the film. So he's, he's playing himself? No. What you're seeing on the screen is mm. Mission Impossible 7. Like I say, if we don't get Cruise, it can be Born Identity and okay. it can be What's It. Yeah. Oh, so if we get Cruise, he is, he is playing himself. Yeah, and he's just made. And, he's that. Ju and in this film, he's just made Mission Impossible Seven. It's the future, is it? This. No, what you're seeing, right, is Mission Impossible Seven on the screen. So I've gone into the cinema, and I think I'm going in to see Mission Impossible Seven, or I'm going in knowing it's this film. Y yeah, I go, know, so I'm going you know. in to see. So, so yeah. what, it's, okay, what's this film called? I haven't got a title yet. We'll just call it Carl Pilkington Project Two. Right. Okay. Can't so you go in. The opening thing is Mission Impossible 7. You think I've Listen seen it? Oh, yeah, I've seen it. I thought it was just KP2. Yeah, I'm confused. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, uh, excuse me. Uh, well, um, I, I was. I came here to see Shh. KP2. Shh. No, no, this is not the film I came to see. I'm talking Shh. to the usher. I'm talking to the usher. No, this is the film. It just. What, what you're seeing is Mission Impossible 7. Like, I don't understand. Right. Listen. Oh. So, what happens is then it, it sort of pans out. You yeah. see it's a telly. Ah. ah. There's a bloke watching Mission, Mission Impossible, Impossible 7. 7. Right, his girlfriend's watching it, going, oh, "I love Tom Cruise." Yeah, he's there, going, "I can't be doing with him." He's so overrated. it is set in the future, though. This because we're assuming that he's made seven. So this is a yeah. How far in the future is it? Well, like, when will Mission Impossible Seven be made? I don't know. Probably about two years. The way it's going. Right. So yeah, two thousand and thirteen. Okay. Right. And this is already this is underway. Then is it this this a practice of recycling the body? Yeah, yeah, by then it's well known that it's out there right. as, a, as a scientific. Let's not get bogged down in a lot of these things okay. we can iron out mm. as I say in the script. So you see Mission Impossible Cheryl, 7 on the screen. are any of those biscuits still knocking around? Do you want to do this meeting? <laughs> yes, I do. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry he's a bit Sorry. E easily distracted. Sorry. But I will have a biscuit as well, Cheryl. <laughs> um, so, okay, I've been watching this film. I've, it's Mission Impossible 7. It's pulled out. There's a guy in his room in his lounge. His girlfriend's with his girlfriend. watching it. She's yes. loving it. She's a fan she of Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Right. right. He's a little bit niggled. He wanted to watch something else. Sure. She decided on the DVD. Mm -hmm. He sat there annoyed. I can't right. be dealing with Tom Cruise. I can't believe they've made seven of these films. Right. He's a rubbish actor. I right. should be the actor. You know, ah. I've been doing acting for years. But he's not an actor. He's well, he is. Okay. But he hasn't quite made it. He's, he's in pantos. He's sending a lot of demos off. But he's just it's not funny because I remember this is one of our notes to make it more plausible. This film because you didn't know him as an actor before, did you? Yeah. Well, this is how it works, isn't it? Right. Interesting. Yeah. Well, th you two don't know about that meeting, do you? Right. Okay. So right. So that. he's a he's a struggling actor. Hmm. So what happens is next day they get up, right? Yeah. She's still going on about Tom Cruise. Loves him. Drinks some sick of him. Right. She loves him. Do my biscuits garnish my tea. I left it in there too long because oh, he put me off. Just stupid. hang on. Let me just think. Can I get the spoon, please? Uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Oh, it's, it's all gone. Soggy. soggy. Mm, oh, that's soggy. Cheryl, can we get some more of those biscuits in here, please? Do you want, do you want to wear more? Or? Yeah, I'd love to yeah, hear no, more, please. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. conscious we... that Colin Firth's coming in. He's won an Oscar, so... And uh, he's got a, a, an idea yeah. about um, a, a, a prince with a right. trash palette. Anyway, listen. So, um, what happens is he gets so annoyed with his girlfriend liking Tom Cruise. Mm. He, um, he plans to kill him. So he plans to kill Tom wow, Cruise. This is new. I've now this, this man is a driving actor. He's obviously based in the UK because he's in Panto. So he flies to Hollywood. Now the equivalent of of that. Oh, he's based in the, of, he's based in yeah, America. Yeah, he's a bit part player. Yeah. So uh, he sees Tom Cruise. 
he kills him somehow now it's some way right how does he kill him because this is all new to me i yeah. don't want to put everything because down again, on paper this is just the, a rough the original idea pitch in the restaurant tom cruise just dies on the set of mission Impossible <laughs> Seven. See, right yeah um oh Would yeah you... yeah 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 right, that's right okay. oh, hang on. so okay, right. he dies in the film in mission impossible 7 they're doing right. that thing on the strings right he cuts he lands right his body is in perfect condition. So but how is she watching the film? film? Yeah, did they put it out even after Tom Cruise no, died? No, no, sorry, he was filming Mission Impossible 8. So he's, okay, so... He's they, filming the next they, one. They film the next one, Mission Impossible 8, okay, sure. He's, he's annoyed, he's going, I can't believe they're making more of these films. Right. I can't get a gig, and yet yeah. they're churning this crap out. Yeah. Okay. So he's on his springs. On his wires, yeah. On his wires. Yeah. An accident. Springs happens. sounds better. <laughs> he's bouncing around <laughs> like a baby growth. Yeah. Yeah. The right. strings cut, smash. <laughs> Tom Cruise dead. Right. 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 The bloke hears this on the radio on the news. Yeah. The right. the girlfriend's fella mm. hears it on the news. He can't believe it. He's like, yeah. Ooh. Takes his eye off the road a little bit in the celebration. Right. <laughs> Truck plows into the car right. so he's killed as well well is he okay oh, okay little interlude hmm. fades up um comes out of you're seeing it out of his eyes you see his eyes sort of opening you know when you see yeah, out yeah, the yeah, eyes yeah, you see yeah, the yeah, eyelids yeah, 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 yeah. and you see his girlfriend there sort of looking at him like a bit bit startled oh, sure yeah. and he's going oh what happened and she's going it's all right it's all right and he's going oh get me a mirror she's going i don't want to get you a mirror yet oh, okay hold on what's going on you've you've had a bad accident oh probably uh, terribly disfigured as well this is what he's thinking oh how yeah. bad do i look Scarred, you know, burned, you, know yeah. you fancy that tom cruise i'm oh. like on the other way she's going it's all right it's all right it uh, can't be relevant though that Tom Cruise was killed at the same time. So I don't. I don't need to think about Tom Cruise. I'll put him out of my mind. Okay, put him out of my mind. Anyway, what's he going to look all like? All mirrors out of the room and everything. He's just learning right. to yeah. learn to walk. He's going. Why well, can't I look in a mirror? And the doctor's going. Yeah. No point. Yeah. Right, okay. No point. You've got to get used to this body. See what do you mean? It's great that Tom Cruise did just do a small cameo at the this beginning of this film. This is good as well because we're seeing it through the. What's the voice like, by the way? The bloke's voice. <laughs> it's the same. Just the same as it was oh, earlier. It? <laughs> Um, so he's and so the whole thing is through his eyes i haven't seen his face no then he gets walking it's yep. almost time to go home yep his girlfriend comes in yep it's her job to tell him the, the, the new news oh the my shocking God, what news. is the news um she says there's a mirror look in there he looks yeah. in it yeah. he's tom cruise right, right. because he had his accident on the set he yeah. had the accident they ended up in the hospital right. quick quick we've got to act quick this is the time this is the future right. where they use where they can use body bodies again. all the rest of it so tom cruise is dead tom cruise dead this but bloke is, brian is his, body, is, 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 his body's squashed but what's his name brian yeah but brian's brain is in tom cruise body. just a donor body he just happens to just look. happen to that's how yeah, it is it's just, just, just meat it's just, just like top. like a lung donor exactly. a heart donor yeah. it's so, just so it's just brian uh, he just looks like Tom Cruise now. He's got Tom Cruise's flesh. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Right. Now, at first, initially, he's annoyed. But he's his like, voice, oh, is the Tom voice Cruise. is still the same as his was, even though it's got Tom Cruise's it's mouth. It's got a bit of both. A little bit different. Who's doing bit. The, but uh, okay, sorry. Just practically, who is doing the voiceover then for the? It's Tom now. So he's Tom's acting. sort of doing an impression of the, this actor. Brian. Brian's inside Tom. His yeah. name is Brian, but when you look at it on the telly, when the camera whizzes round, yeah. And you see him sat in his bed it's tom cruise sure right okay his girlfriend's over the moon because she loves tom cruise right he's gutted because he couldn't stand him he can't stand the films he's thinking yeah oh. but he must be thinking i look like tom cruise one of the most loved actors of his generation yeah. you know, it, he's think so, but he's not because he's in shock remember right. he was expecting to see himself and when he looks in the mirror yeah that must be else. shocking yeah so also the voice he's going i can't stand this and she's going calm down calm down you'll get used to it i don't want to get used to it and uh she's sort of saying look you're alive right stop moaning yeah brian, stop moaning brian um she's calling him brian i assume she says and yeah. tom cruise just had a sort of donor card that allowed his body to be given away did it yes yeah, the future right this is this is this is 2013 steve <laughs> things have changed <laughs> clearly right but what's his girlfriend's name claire 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 and brian okay Great, just a different body, just a slightly different look. All just right, like, so yeah, right. he's seen that he looks like Tom Cruise. He's shocked, but he's getting used to it. He doesn't look like him. He is him. Okay, no, right. he's not him. He's Brian, isn't he? 
Yeah, but to most people, it's yeah, when he, he leaves. When he leaves the hospital, they go, oh, Tom, I thought you were dead. They're all going, it's Tom, it's Tom, and he's going, really? oh, yeah, and he's going, oh, I knew this would happen. It's doing me head in. Are they paparazzi? Do they, the paparazzi no, think it's Tom? No, no, no. no Let no him papa. explain. Sorry, because okay, you so heard this. So I want to hear though. this story. This is weird though, because it, 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 so he looks like Tom Cruise. So he wheels out. He's in a wheelchair. Okay. He's going. I'm sick of this. Uh, the other patients are going, Tom. I thought you were dead. And he's yeah, going, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's annoyed. He gets in the car. He gets out there. Right. And he sees a poster up on the side of the road right. for Mission Impossible 8. It's, I don't know. It's finished. I thought he died while they were filming It's not it. finished. But now, these days, he's shouting about films before they're made. <laughs> okay, it's right. like Lord really? of the Rings, isn't it? Yeah, they're going, Lord of the Rings is in the making. And they're wow. going brilliant and all the hype well, and everything. Up, even after seems premature. No, the poster yeah. was already up. That seems premature up. given that no, a man well, died mean, during the production. It doesn't yeah. matter. I'd have, put, I'd have taken the posters down. No, but it's then I don't work in Hollywood. <laughs> right. So the poster's up there and he sees it as he's right. in the car driving past. Yeah. And he thinks, that can't, that can't be finished. Doesn't make sense, yeah. They both look at each other. This is your chance. You wanted to be an actor. This is the chance. Yeah. Right. Go back to the studio. So he goes in. Hello. You don't know me, and they go, "Oh, we think we do." And you go, "No, you don't. I'm Brian. Tom right. died on your film set." Well, presumed. they must know that. They must know <laughs> Tom that Tom Cruise died. is dead because his family must have been. All right. If, if you want, it makes no difference. We can tweak the script. Right. <laughs> you have because before he was a plumber. By the way, <laughs> it was a plumber who was turning up, going, "I'm going to finish Mission Impossible 8. <laughs> so that was. The I much prefer that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. And I can sort out your lavatory. You get, you get the idea. Right, no, no, we don't get the idea. So this is, Brian has turned up looking like Tom Cruise. He said the film company, right, who must know that Tom Cruise died on their film set. What were they going to do? When they they would have had to wrap it up. They would have well, had no, to what, say- You said they put the, the posters are up. <laughs> yes, the posters are up before they've even finished So they're cancelling the film until he walks Basically, in. Basically, yeah. Oh, so they are cancelling the film. They're cancelling it. Okay, so um, we're afraid that, um, uh, production has stopped on Mr. Bustle, uh, 8 due to the death of Tom Cruise. Hang it's on a stopped. minute. What? I'm Brian. Who the, who's Brian? Oh my god, you look exactly like Tom Cruise. Oh, have they done that thing where they put Brian's brain in Tom Cruise's body? Yeah. Ah, oh, but it's not Tom Cruise, you can't act like him. I'm, I'm, you I'm an actor. Yeah, but oh, he was good because he was like one yeah, of the best actors. he's not that good. I never rated him. Yeah, but a lot of people did. And he's yeah, got a lot of people set. didn't. So right. let me bring in a new audience for you, eh? I but can bring you a bit to this. Right. So the so the film people, so just tell me what happens, do they sign up the, 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 the new guy? They but sign is up it in right? the news? It must be in the news that But Tom are they Cruise pretending died. that it's really Tom no, and that Tom survived? That. They can't do that. No. But they're quite unscrupulous, So these they've Hollywood told people. the world that Brian is taken over. <laughs> Brian, right, he used to be a plumber, this but is it's now- Brian, he has no surname. <laughs> Brian has no He's like Madonna or Cher. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This, yeah. This, this, so, <laughs> so Brian, right? Is that Brian? Above, with a, it's above the title. I Brian bet, is. I bet, I bet it's Brian with a Y. Brian right. with a Y Brian. in Brian. Mission Impossible Eight. This won't work. Where's Tom Cruise? It's not the same. So this, of course, gives it a boost because right. um, well, the flagging see, franchise is being rejuvenated. The, the yeah. press, the news that's yeah. out there. Yeah. Tom Cruise and his new film. Well, it's not Tom Cruise. They can't say that. Well, it is though. When you look at him, you go, "Oh, it's Tom Cruise." Well, no, you got to say a bloke that looks like Tom Cruise. The body of Tom new... Cruise. Yeah, the acting of the... <laughs> Kill Brian. <laughs> <laughs> In a new movie, Mission Impossible Eight, starring <laughs> the bones and skin and stuff of Tom Cruise with Brian's brain. Oh, Do it. you like the, you like <laughs> Do you like Tom Cruise's face, but not his acting? <laughs> Mission Impossible 8 <laughs> from the people who brought you the first seven <laughs> and the hair of the bloke who was in the first seven, <laughs> but with Brian doing all the lights. <laughs> it's Brian. Okay, so it's some I've never heard of. I'm not the seventh sequel. <laughs> no, wait. Sorry, I really want to hear the ending of this story movie. Please let right. me ask questions. You've had, you had your chance to ask him questions. <laughs> Right. So where are we? In a sort of 90 minute running time of a movie, where are we now in the film? Are we about two thirds of the way through? We're close, we're close to the end. Okay. So Mission Impossible 8 has been made. So what's the end of our movie? Not of Mission Impossible 8, but the movie you're making. What's the ending there? Do we ever get to see him in Mission Impossible 8? Yeah, but I think what happens is, he becomes the person who he never liked. Right. 
and it's it's i just want to get across the moral that who are we are we the, the people in our body or the people we look like hmm. what's important in life hmm. is it the way you look or the way you think and he he changes because he looks like tom cruise he becomes the man he never liked but you see to me just from the hmm. outsider's point of view it, even if i was to accept all the other premise of this movie which is clearly horseshit <laughs> what would have been more interesting is that they don't tell the world that it's a new guy that they tell the world it's tom and they've brought him back to life yeah, love that that seems more interesting because then he dropped, he dropped there's the tension they're lying to the world and this guy he want he's getting the glory that he mm. always wanted as an actor but he's lying and mm. that's a more interesting tension is he going to yeah. declare actually i'm not really tom i'm brian i've been lying to you all and it, that seems like a more interesting dilemma instead you've got we've brought back the walking corpse of tom cruise with another man's mind i mean but i think if the whole want... world's accepting of that <laughs> yeah no but you yeah. do want to see that i think you i think a lot of people would just want to see it for that morbid factor of my god yeah but you're saying but this is you mean they want to see your film because of this morbid factor yeah this is a fiction this is a fiction this didn't really happen you mean the final act of the film is us seeing mission impossible 8 starring the real tom cruise playing just his own cadaver and i mean it's an oscar-winning performance from tom i don't know how he's keeping in check who, who he is <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, what's his girlfriend think of this who's brian's she's loving it isn't she because it's, it's she always liked tom cruise she's what did brian look like just out of interest he's just sort of um sort of an older looking well, who would play him who would play him in this film probably this has got to be american i'm not that pro um what's his name the bloke who was in cheers probably ted danson, ted danson. Ted danson. So Ted Danson <laughs> is Brian. So Claire, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is so confusing because Ted Danson's supposed to be someone that we've never heard of, even though he's Ted Danson, and Tom Cruise is playing himself, the famous actor Tom Cruise, who is now inhabited Ted by Ted Danson, who's Ted not Danson. Ted Danson. <laughs> Ted Danson. Ted Danson as Brian. <laughs> Ted Danson as Brian. As Tom Cruise as I'm Ethan Hunt in Mission Impossible 8. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, have you got a title yet? No. No, I just wanted to know if you're in. Surely the wife of Brian. <laughs> the wife of Brian. Who's played Claire? Uh, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm up for you, you know, that's why I've come to you. I thought you'd know. obvious suggestion. Okay, so, Rebecca okay. De Mornay. Okay. <laughs> she is so hot after the love of a brain or whatever it was called. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you wanna go where everybody knows your name is Brian <laughs> well that's about it for this um special free guide to in aid of red nose day comic relief if you have enjoyed this or even if you haven't please make a contribution big or small to comic relief you can visit rednoseday.com to do that we'd appreciate it little richard curtis would appreciate it mm. he's definitely going to get an obe at some definitely point if not now. a knighthood yeah give him both carl look at it this way supposing people come to this they haven't they don't they didn't like the office extras me steve idiot abroad the ricky gervais show didn't like any of that but they thought hold on they're doing something for charity i'll check this out they've had a whale of a time they've laughed at everything they're gonna go and buy all the guides still available on iTunes now. That that is shameless. <laughs> also, I'm doing a live stand-up comedy tour at the end of the year. You can check out the details on RickyJamaze.com. Ah, <laughs> oh, just do something for charity. Or not. It's up to you. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, and thank you. Goodbye from Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And from the little round headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington, it's a goodbye. Alright. And a big thank you to Positive Internet. Those guys make these little free podcasts possible. Good God.